service, and I was surprised how close it was yeah. to the Catholic Yeah, well, you essentially assigned the same I, I was, missiles. I was really, I thought, well, why aren't they Catholic? Because it's just so close. I, I, of course, I didn't, and that's, I didn't know some of the background about the, the Methodists. I know a little bit more now, but not that much. Yeah, I was surprised. Yeah, yeah. And so um, that's stated in the Book of Discipline, so it's right there in writing as to uh, how far, how close they look, but how far apart they are. And as you can tell, even at 55 years old, I was very ignorant of church history and uh, very ignorant of sacred tradition because those things are not allowed. You suck, you suck. It's just not there. It's just not there. I mean, you know who Martin Luther is, the Protestant Reformation. You don't even really know why, but you know you know about Martin Luther, and um, and and then you know about John Wesley. You know a lot about John Wesley. And Francis Asbury. And Francis Asbury, he was a John Charles. Another famous. Now there are actually um, Charles quite some writer, and there are actually Charles Wesley hymns in our hymnal. Yeah, we sing a Charles Wesley hymn here every now and then. We just giggle every time. <laughs> Which one? We start going. Which one is it? <laughs> it's Charles Wesley. <laughs> Which song is uh, it? Oh, he wrote thousands. There's several, uh, there's several okay. in there. Once over oh, four thousand times to sing. That's his most famous one. Okay. Sometimes, uh, you know, it gets sung. But anyway. Um, we'll back up a little. Yeah, I'm going to back up. So we were attending our church and attending not totally satisfied realizing that something is missing something is wrong we don't know what it is but we didn't know anything else and catholicism was just not even on the table just because it wasn't nothing i had no offense against catholicism it just wasn't i never I, I don't know at that time i didn't know a single catholic didn't know anything never met a catholic if i had they didn't admit that they were they'd come up so, um, the we would Catholic, have... The only Catholic I knew was Robin Drumble. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, we would have communion services uh, once a month or uh, every fifth Sunday, uh, depending on the pastor. That was his choice to do. And about half the time I would go and half the time I wouldn't go, mainly because I didn't feel worthy, because I, I would ask God for forgiveness, but did he really hear me or, you know, what... You know, and, and they place a lot of emphasis, don't take it unworthily, <laughs> even though it's a symbol to them, don't take it unworthily. And so I thought, well, I, I'm not sure I'm worthy. I, I don't know, so maybe I shouldn't take it. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't even go to church on that day. I just had a... Yeah, we were both laying out. Just not so. wanting to, to take it. So some issues happened in our church that caused David and I to theologically go a different way. Um, so we left. And for about three years, we traveled around. Not everything Protestant. You know, visiting, actually, even other Methodist churches, but, you know, trying to figure out what we're going to do. Cedar so just three Springs, years yeah. of Cedar Springs. And, and it was, it always came up the same. Something short. It was always short. So uh, my daughter got engaged to a nice Catholic boy, and she called me up and said, Ben and I are getting married, and, and um, I said, okay. Uh, she said, well, he talked to his mother, and his mother said, <laughs> his mother said, oh, here it comes. And, uh, and she was, you could, in her voice, she was a little upset over the phone because she didn't know how I was going to take it. So she said, his mother said that if he doesn't get married in the Catholic Church, she won't recognize our marriage. I went, wow. No, she's <laughs> I like, like her. She's, she's like, I don't know, almost 30. Your daughter? Yeah, but this time, and I already got an RN, so it wasn't like, okay, now we have to have the birds and the bees talk. No, there's another talk we need to have, <laughs> and that's about Catholics. Yeah, and of course she mentioned well, that yeah, she would sit not. Back and decide what we believe. Yeah, and uh, so basically I laughed. I said, well, I don't have a problem with that. I said, I just don't know what it means. I'm the mother of the bride. Was it mean? I mean, I've never seen a Catholic wedding. What are we supposed to do? She goes. I have an appointment with this priest, and he's, you know, I'll find out something. I said, okay, it's uh, Father Michael. <laughs> uh, so, okay, let me know what he says. <laughs> so, um, you know, they have the four months of counseling, and slowly, you know, 
the information is trickling down to me, what, you know, how we're supposed to proceed, and as far as music and flowers and, you know, all this stuff they don't well, know. to us, she's going to come to Mass. So, um, <laughs> well, she was living on her own. Yeah, she's living on her own. So, anyway, um, so we had the wedding, and uh, so at the rehearsal the night before, Father Michael is there, and you can just imagine what Father Michael looks like. He's running all over the place, the barking guy, yes. orders like crazy, and <laughs> telling people to get the children, and blah, 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 and do all this. And I'm just kind of standing back, like, well, what's the mother and the bride supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, so we're just kind of standing around. Of course, half the family, this whole side of the family was Catholic, you know. And so... We're trying to get to know them. Oh, yeah, they're very nice, very nice. Uh, Kansas City. And so, at the end of the rehearsal dinner, we're, we're uh, and, and he, he well, Father right Michael right. shows, uh, well, it's right before that. Okay, you want to talk? I'm going <laughs> He's talking, okay. No, I, so I, at I, one I, point, I don't did it. <laughs> at one point, uh, during that evening, Father Michael has David cornered. <laughs> I cornered. And I'm across the room, I didn't know. So, I'm, I look around and I go, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that priest has my husband cornered and David's too nice to tell him he's got the wrong side of the family. <laughs> so I, I thought, I have to go to the rescue. So I walk over and uh, I, I jump into the conversation kind of. And, and he goes, so Father Michael is inviting us to come to All Saints. And uh, I said, well, we're not Catholic. I thought you should know that up front. <laughs> and he said, well, it oh, doesn't matter. He said, don't worry about it. Just come, come and see. And, and uh, I said, well, you know, I wouldn't know what to do, you know. And he goes, well, just sit in the back and watch. Nobody cares. And that struck me very strongly because I thought you had to be a special member to attend a Catholic church. That's why it was always off the table. I thought it was a very exclusive thing that if you weren't born Catholic, you know, raised Catholic, then you really shouldn't walk into one. So even at 55, I'm under that impression. That's how the Protestant influence is so heavy there. And so it took me two weeks to survive the wedding. And so I finally, two weeks later, I thought, well, I, you know, I think I'm going to get up and, and do what he said. I'm going to sit in the back and I'm just going to watch this and see August. what happens. Yeah, it's in August. And uh, if he lied to me, I will <laughs> never, ever come back. You know, he was recruiting or something. I thought, I will <coughs> never come back. Um, you know, I was a little suspicious. Like, you know, why are you, you know, you trying to build your numbers or whatever? Because that's what a lot of Protestants do. So I'm kind of thinking in a Protestant way. So I went to Mass. And I sat in the back. I didn't stand up. I didn't sit down. I just sat there. And I watched everything. I mean, I watched you. I watched them. Uh, I watched everything and I was completely amazed. Uh, completely amazed. For example, we hold the gospel up coming down. I thought, look at the reverence they pay the gospel. You know? Look at how they bow before the altar before they do anything. Look at the reverence they pay to God. Wow. Wow. Look at how much scripture they read. And when they're not reading scripture, look at all the scripture that's in everything they say. This is bam. I mean, just like it was nothing I was used to. It was like mm -hmm. in the Methodist church, there's a lot that goes on before scripture's ever read, and it's only maybe one or two verses. And then you get this word study or something in the sermon. And, but there's a lot of stuff that goes on before and after. But here, one hymn and we're reading gospel, we're reading scripture. It was very focused. And it's 10 minutes worth of scripture. Focused. We realized how focused it was on, on Christ, everything. And I, I just sat and watched and the reverence that everybody in the room had and how focused they seemed to be on what was going on down front. And that had such an impact on me. And then some of the things that are said, I mean, the Gloria that you sang, wow, that's, that's the angels saying that. And the, and, and so I'm not worthy uh, for you to enter under my roof. Wow, that was the Roman centurion and Lamb of God. Well, gosh, that's out of Revelation. That's, this is just so amazing. This is just so amazing. <coughs> so the Mass is over. We get up. We leave. 
And uh, we didn't know anybody, so we're not talking to anybody. So we get up and, and we walk out, and and we're about halfway down that walk area. And I just I said, David, I don't know about you, but I have to go back. I have to come back again. And he goes, I do too. I do too. I said, something's happened. I, I've got to go back. I think that Sunday. David Carter, and I don't know for I sure. Never the priest I think David Carter was the priest. And you know how, and, and Father Doug does this too. Mm -hmm. Once he's touched the host, mm -hmm. his fingers stay together. Mm -hmm. And you could see the absolute reverence mm -hmm. with which anything that mm -hmm. is going on up there is being handled. All the way down to cleaning the cups, the chalice. And it was giving me goosebumps watching mm -hmm. that. Not knowing really, not appreciating really that, 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 that all of the people around me were saying, this is the body of Christ and this is the blood of Christ. We believe it. And I thought that was extreme truth. And, and I thought finally an answer. We, didn't, we didn't, <laughs> didn't hear that. We saw it. We saw it. And I, and I was, when we were having that conversation, I said, these people know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that before. Um, I can't begin to tell you some of the services I saw as a Protestant, and I'm not, not from the Methodist Church or the Protestants, but the, the, the worship just wasn't there. It was more about entertainment. And yeah, got so more and more. when I went to this first Mass, I thought, there is no entertainment here. <laughs> I, mean that, I mean that in a very wonderful way. It's not for the. I mean, I can go to a show. I can go to a concert. You know, there was no entertainment. It was strictly focused. And so I thought, finally, I have an answer. It is true food, and it is his body and his blood. So I can't go back. I have to, I have to choose the Catholic Church. Now, hmm. That puts me in a pickle because <laughs> there's this thing about Mary and there's this thing about the Pope and you yes, know. what was at the back of the church when they got out walked out the second Sunday? That big thing of the R C I sign up table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was this thing about, you know, um, Tanya was there grabbing us. <laughs> there was this thing about confessing to a priest. Because, you know, Protestants believe we could just and you can. You can take your and, you know, confession straight to God as well. But <laughs> we, went, we went to Mass for just maybe two weeks, and then we signed up for RCIA because um, um, there was truth there. I didn't know how it's going to work out. I was taking the biggest risk because I'm 55 years old. I've been a Methodist my entire life. Well, I mean, just completely just turn myself upside down and do this was just... I kept walking around going, I must be crazy, <laughs> but I have to do this, but I must be crazy. You know, you've heard Carrie say it, you've heard Tanya say it, I'm sure, and, and we were saying the same thing to ourselves. We're going to go to RCIA, and if there's a deal breaker, we'll leave. Mm -hmm. So the week came up for Mary. <laughs> you see how the deal breaker went. <laughs> yeah. So nothing ever was a deal breaker because it was explained in such a logical, sacred, traditional, sacred, scriptural way that, that I had no ob objection to it. Everything that I had been told uh, as a Protestant, all those things were untrue, absolutely untrue. I mean, Protestants think of Mary as the mother of Jesus, not even as the mother of God, but the mother of Jesus. Just a and she's, vessel. And she completes the nativity scene every Christmas. And that's about all the emphasis there ever is on Mary. So, uh, like Carrie just said, it, you, you have to come, Protestants have a hard time with Mary, and because and, we didn't grow up with her. And so I'm, I'm the same way. I'm still learning how to include Mary. But we, uh, my main thing was the Eucharist. I am so drawn to the Eucharist. Um, because I, no matter how close I tried to come to God as a Methodist, it can't be ever as personal as taking the body and blood inside me. 
So I have a very simple religion. And the, <laughs> and the reverence for the Eucharist, or whatever you call it, the Methodist Church, was just not there. I mean, there were some Sundays, you know, a lot of Sundays when they did it, there'd be a little big cup, pick it up out juice. of a tray, it's grape juice, mm -hmm. pick it up out of a tray, and then, you know, a layman would probably, one of the church leaders would have the tray, and then you'd have this, the little biscuit. Something about that. Like a chiclet, you know, chiclet. chiclets. No, 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 no. That's what they look like. And, 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 and the words are saying, blood of Christ, body of Christ. And it's like... Symbolic. Symbolic. Uh, and then, but there were some Sundays where they uh, would, you'd go up and you'd tear off a piece of bread or the person holding the bread would tear off a piece of bread. Of a this, loaf of bread. A <laughs> loaf, loaf of bread. Leavened. And then you you dip it in the grape juice, and of course, and there'd be a trail of drips. That's <laughs> <laughs> funny. They, had they call it dip, uh, dip and drip. So they would vary. They would vary uh, the style, and and it was it began to be meaningless to me. And that was I don't know. That was. And then, like I said, the church started parting ways. You know, they're I'm very conservative, I guess. Uh, yeah, oh, let me. I'm a son of a preacher, Methodist prep minister. And I was brought up pretty well versed. I would go to church on Sunday. I, my dad became a minister when I was 13. We would go to church on Sunday. Cause, so then I was pretty aware. Mm -hmm. And I mean, sometimes I'd hear the same sermon three times on a Sunday because he was on a circuit. He was a Methodist circuit rider. Modern day drove on a car, not on a horse. Up in Union County. Yeah. And so I felt like I was, I never went through confirmation mm -hmm. it, because I was not in a regular church. These are family churches, and most of the people were, they didn't have a lot of kids. Yeah. Tiny churches. And uh, like I said, and then the church we were in, I'll just say there was a lot of dispensationalism and a lot of Darbyism. And those things I had couldn't find any foundation. What was that last word? Darbyism is uh, the rapture, um, the rapture idea. And I, and, End I times. Couldn't, and I couldn't find any justification for mm -hmm. what I was seeing from the Baptist church, from the evangelical church, and these people in my church as a foundation to that. And there was, a, let's say, an HR problem at the church. We had a meeting, and these people were arguing with the bishop over it. Mm -hmm. And we were in the middle of it. Now you get into an argument with the bishop, and he's standing there thinking, saying, I'm going to close your church if you don't do such and such. <laughs> and that was really where the split came. When we went to RCIA, um, you know, I had some of those deal breaker ideas, but I got enriched beyond belief taking the classes because I learned about sacred scripture and I learned about sacred tradition, which was there are no lost materials. There have been saints all the way from the beginning. There was a way that you read the Bible that you read it the way they read or who understood it the way they would have understood it. There are tons of things to read. Also, a big thing that just bugged my eyes out was that every bishop can trace their apostolic ability all the way back, all the way back to the apostles. And I just went home that day almost paralyzed from just shock. And, so, and all. <coughs> of, a lot of, of our that. traditions wouldn't even acknowledge Peter as, the, as potentially the first pope. And that was not something they'd ever admit. That we're just your average mainstream Protestants, and that's how we thought. And 
I guess I owe a lot of credit to my son-in-law. <laughs> and his mother. <laughs> Unfortunately, our daughter has not found time to go through RCI herself. Well, there's always hope. Yeah, there's yeah. always hope. We go up there, we go to church. On both Sundays that were there, we're there on average Sunday. We ran into Father Augustine on Sunday. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah. The happy priest. Yeah, he was. I didn't. I had not met him, uh, but he uh, said they heard a lot about he, him. He, he, they were he. They introduced him. I didn't re recognize his name. They introduced him as a member of the Apostles of Jesus. So after the service, I went up to him. I said, "You know Father Pontian Kimba?" Yeah. How's Father Michael? <laughs> That's 900 miles away. <laughs> say that too. That's that's what's unique about the Catholic Church and that's what's beautiful in it. It doesn't matter where you go in the world, it's going to be the exact oh, yeah. same. It might be in a different language. Yeah, but, but you know what's going on. You know what's I've going been in on. Well, <coughs> with, yeah, with, with the exception of the this first year we were up there was when they were changing the the translation of the liturgy. Yeah, so there was yeah we much. managed to go through RCIA and learn all this, and then we had to relearn. <laughs> <laughs> so this has happened recently for you? because We came into the class of 2011 okay. Easter Vigil. And, and speaking of Easter Vigil, that was the most incredible experience of my life. And if you haven't been in a long time, go refresh your faith and go Easter Vigil. You can go to the, go to the uh, Chrism Mass, too, oh. in the bigger... Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's three and a half hours long. But it doesn't seem like it. It doesn't no. seem like it. And it's the most reverent night of the year. It really is. So. Anyway, that's our boring story that we had to follow after Carrie. So. <laughs> Not boring. Um, uh, could you t talk about how your awe of the Eucharist impacts your daily life today? We try to attend daily mass. We go to daily mass. Uh, we try to go to adoration once a month. Um, Just twice this month. Uh, and we're not. I'm, at least I'm going to admit. I, you know, I don't quite know what to do in adoration. I just go and I read, and say the rosary. Do different things. And yeah. Just be. I think that's most of it. Yeah. But every time I take it, it's like I've got strength for the day. I'm being fed. You know, uh, when I hear people like you and Terry speak, because you're converts, see, I'm a cradle Catholic, and taught, I was, went to parochial school. I don't know, I just took things for granted, and up to many years, I did, I'm a Catholic, and I accept this thing, you know, I probably, I probably didn't know my faith as well. I, I think know. people. I think people are in little wells. But you know, yeah. you you know, you you re-energize people like me who have just become kind of you know, staid and stoic in our faith, mm -hmm. and you know, we just go along with what well, this is what we're supposed to do, and I accept it. But you know, you uh, you do us a favor by you doing me a favor by coming and speaking to us and tell us how. You, you know, you receive Jesus in the Catholic Church, and it's it's really extremely. Uh, we we received Jesus a long time ago. But you know, in the Catholic Church, we've never been. Yeah, um, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, it, it's. I know what it's like not to have the Eucharist. So I appreciate it every time I have it. Well, the Methodists just truly uh, don't believe that it's the actual body and blood. No, they don't right? believe it's just a symbolic thing. Okay. Here's this bread and this grape juice, and just eat it and drink it because Jesus said, "Do that in remembrance of me." Uh -huh. And the word, the way they use remembrance, is like just remember that I was here on earth, not in the way it should be. Not John. Not John it's not six, going. Yeah. It's not going back to Calvary. Yeah. It's just remember Jesus told us to do this. I don't think so, there's any Protestant church that actually believes it's like the body and blood. No, they don't. Uh, I think the Orthodox Church does. Yeah, they do. But, but the, um, Protestant the the the, the Anglic Anglican. Anglicans do, and, yeah. and some some and branch some, some branches of Lutherans Lutheran do. Church, yeah. well, I think the Anglicans believe it's both bread and 
Yeah, they they call it consubstantiation. 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 There's a reason the Protestant churches don't believe it because it isn't. Because if you don't have the apostolic transition, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that, that, that broke, you broke, broke off have, with the Reformation. Yeah. yeah, you don't have the Eucharist. You don't have the body and blood of Christ. You do have a symbol. So there's, you, right. So there's there's no way. It was interesting. I was in a Bible study many, many years ago, and I went to a, a Protestant church in town here, a big one, and they were studying the Gospel of John. And I couldn't wait until they got to John 6, because I wanted to, and they were dissecting every word, every mm -hmm. sentence. And we got to John 6, and it was like, boom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> passed over the best part. I expect that in every Bible study. No, I was shocked because yeah. I thought yeah. they, huh, uh -huh. you know, because they were so thorough. This is not understood at all. Right. It's not. It's, it's, um, I wish I could just go back to my church and just grab everybody and bring them over here. And <laughs> say, please attend just one mass. Just you'll one see. mass. Just one mass, you'll see. But, yeah. Maybe you could have a renewal of your vows. I don't know, when your wedding anniversary and have a party here. The mass. <laughs> yeah, a lot of We've Protestants take it personally when you leave. So. Okay. <laughs> oh, you can so invite them. Maybe exactly. one, one person will come. Exactly, we're excommunicating. Maybe one person will come. Especially if you move to Catholicism, you're kind of, you know, excommunicated a little bit. We lost a lot of friends. We lost oh, several we family members. We lose them all. We lose them all. We have some. Some there, there, there are some that You're Memphis. a heathen. When you, when you become a, you're a heathen. Because you don't believe so and so and so you're a heathen. And I you know That's very unchristian line. <laughs> there are some that left us because of the of the um, the issues that were going on in the church. Oh. We were just on the other side of that argument. We believed in the authority the authority of the bishops. So. And the question I got was are Catholics Christians? Yeah. Yes. That, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, we get that one. Yeah. We get that one too. It just that's overwhelming to me. We're, we're about out of time, so. Yeah, sorry. Okay, well, could, will you will you lead us in prayer? Sure. Yeah, our Father or something. Good. Okay. Well, let's do it. Let's do it our Father. Okay. okay. In the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen.